Central Hall of Botanic Gardens, owned by Bangor University. It's one of the best places on the mainland to see red squirrels, and we're going to learn all about the biggest threats to our red squirrels and what we can do about it. Efforts on Anglesey to bring red squirrels back from the brink of extinction have been hugely successful, with red squirrels now being seen on the mainland in areas from Bangor to Brockmellon. Red squirrel populations have suffered in the past, and at the time nobody knew why red squirrels were disappearing. A huge amount of scientific papers now point the finger at the grey squirrel, and in particular a disease they carry. Squirrel pox. Research has shown that up to 70% of grey squirrels carry squirrel pox disease. The grey squirrels act as a host for the infection, whereas the red squirrels die after prolonged suffering. Once a red squirrel contracts squirrel pox, they have about 10 days where they show no symptoms at all, but are capable of spreading the disease to other red squirrels. After roughly about 10 days of the red squirrel being infected with squirrel pox, it will start to show signs. So before that, you can't tell if a squirrel has squirrel pox simply by looking at it. There are no signs whatsoever but they'll start to see these, um, these blisters around the eyes and the hands and the feet and the ears that you can see here. And these blisters will swell so much that the eye will eventually close. The squirrel will either starve to death because it can't find any food or it can't eat any food because of the blisters, or the blisters will get infected and then they can get a sort of sepsis infection which will eventually cause them to die. It is not yet fully understood how pox is transmitted. However, some theories suggest it might be through bites, ticks, mites and fleas. Squirrels are constantly popping into each other's drays, which are littered with thousands of these tiny creatures. But research is ongoing into this. Camera traps like these can be really useful in monitoring red squirrel populations. They tell you whether there are squirrels in the area, and during outbreaks of disease, they can even monitor the health of the red squirrels. During an outbreak of pox here in 2017, lots of camera traps were deployed to monitor the population. During a six month period, we only had one video that showed a red with signs of the infection. No squirrels yet. No. No. The video wasn't of great quality and the squirrel wasn't seen again. Oh, <laughs> oh two days. We have a very dedicated team of volunteers who visit Jaborth and Vainal every week to check on the health of the red squirrel population. These volunteers are absolutely vital in the battle against squirrel pox. It is always useful to have the public on your side. If you have lots of people on the lookout for red squirrels and unusual behaviour, it might mean you can act quickly with suspected pox cases. In 2008, Formby Nature Reserve suffered a massive blow for their population there by losing 8 to 900. Red Squirrels Trust Wales have created a database of people feeding red squirrels on Anglesey. This was deemed priceless during the pox outbreak of 2017. 
As soon as we had confirmation from the lab of pox, the members of the database were notified by email and given advice on what to do to minimise the spread of the disease. We were very lucky at Trebolth. The squirrel pox disease did not reach Anglesey and we seemed to only lose a few reds in the immediate area and the number of interactions and therefore chance of passing on pox was low. Squirrel pox is highly contagious and because red squirrels come in contact with each other so often through dray sharing, feeding in the same area and chasing each other, it gets passed on really, really easily. The first official detection of squirrel pox was in the 1980s. Even though a reduction, the red squirrel population had been witnessed for many more years. There are written notes regarding red squirrels being found with lesion in scabs prior to grey squirrels being introduced to Great Britain. But obviously no pathological tests for pox were done back then, so what was being reported could easily be staphylococcus or a similar infection that can look very much like squirrel pox. Social media is a great way of publicising the outbreak, detailing what people should be looking for and who to contact if they find any dead squirrels. This, along with displaying posters in key public areas, will help spread the word. So if you find a dead red squirrel that is clearly suffering from some sort of infection, the first step would be to send it to the lab to get tested. Whilst you're waiting for the results from the lab, it'd be beneficial to clean all feeding stations with antiviral spray and, if possible, to remove them. Removing the feeding stations will limit the contact between squirrels and therefore reduce the risk of infection. Some fantastic research done by Dave Everest and his team at Animal and Plant Health has proven that adenovirus can be detected just by hair samples alone. So this suggests that squirrel pox may also be able to be detected by hair samples in the near future. If we can do this, this will revolutionise how samples are taken and significantly increase the rate of pox detection prior to the symptoms being visible. In Formby, Lancashire Wildlife Trust's Red Squirrel Ranger, Rachel Cribbs, has trained her dog Max to detect dead red squirrels. Dogs can search an area much more quickly and thoroughly than people, and Max can detect diseased carcasses that can be removed from the environment to prevent further spread of the virus, which is another way to help in the fight to detect the presence of pox. <laughs> So to summarise, you can't confirm squirrel pox simply by looking at a squirrel. You can suspect it, but to get confirmation you must send it to a laboratory to get tested. However, if you do suspect squirrel pox at any time, please contact your local red squirrel group immediately with a picture of the individual and the exact location.